Hi, I'm Guillermo, senior video producer for Chow Hound. Today we're in the East Village in Manhattan and we're gonna visit one of my favorite Vietnamese spots, Madame Bo. When you think of Vietnamese soups, everybody thinks about pho. I wanna try something new. So I'm meeting with chef Jimmy Lee. He's gonna show me how to make Ban Bo Hue, which is another traditional Vietnamese soup. This one is very popular for its balance of acidity, spice, and umami flavors. Let's go make some. So Jimmy, what are we gonna make today? Tell me everything about this magnificent soup. We're gonna be making uh, Bong Bo Hue. Mm -hmm. It's a very famous beef noodle soup in central Vietnam. This is the second most popular Vietnamese soup. It's similar to pho in terms of because it's beef broth, lemongrass heavy, and it's spicy. Nice. So the broth is very complex. Is the recipe that you have at the restaurant right now the traditional version, or did you modify it, do something um, with it? So in Hue, when they make Bong Bo Hue, it's a little bit more clear. Mm -hmm. But because my family is from Southern Vietnam, everything in our restaurant is Southern Vietnamese. So we made it a little bit more spicy, more rich in flavor. And that's why our broth is so red, so much more red compared to the traditional authentic. It's way. more packed with. It's more packed with flavor. So what's the first thing that we need to do here? We have beef bones, shin bones, and bone marrow. Over here, we have beef shank. This is gonna go in the pot as well as when we're making our broth. First step, we're just gonna clean the bones. We're gonna have the pot go up to boil for about 15, 20 minutes. The reason why we're cleaning the bones is one, we have to make sure that all the dirt, scum, bacteria comes out, we kill it all. We try to remove it completely as best as we can, mm -hmm. right, for sanitary purposes with a new brand new pot of water. So the start of the broth is the clean bones. You get that to a boil again? Yes, and then you're gonna cook this pot at home in about six hours. Somebody's making this for a dinner party and they really want to impress people. Spend your time cooking that broth. Exactly, spend the time, start early in the morning. So now we're gonna add our beef shank. And the, the beef shank you can cook for about two hours because you don't want it to be too tender, so you can cut them later, so we can add it to our final dish later. So aside from the beef, the main star of this dish is the lemongrass, right? Yes. Lemongrass is not very common in American cuisine. Yes. Not a lot of people here use it. How do you use it in this dish? So this is fresh lemongrass. You can smell that. Ah, it so it's really good, right? We're gonna start smashing it. This has a purpose. It's for releasing aromatics. Or... Yes, the water absorbs everything. So when you smash it, you know, it really helps the process. What do you use for smashing it? Here we use, we, we obviously have a mallet, but at home you can use the back of a knife, you can use a hammer. Yeah. Or just be safe and buy a mallet. Yeah, just be safe and buy a mallet. Yeah. Okay, you gotta be careful with your hands. Hold one lemongrass from the top here so it doesn't start moving around. A lot of people don't cook with ginger for their bomba way, but we cook with ginger because it cleans the broth. And not only that, adds another layer of flavor. That's Smell excellent. that. Uh, ginger. I love and now we're gonna start smashing. You don't have to skin them or de-skin them. You, you're just gonna start smashing the ginger to be in the broth. This is a really fun part of making this dish. You get to smash things. Yes. So here we have a pineapple. So we're gonna slice this pineapple and we're gonna put it in the broth with bones to cook our stock with. A red onion as well inside. Where you can use one or two. I preferably use one because I don't want the onion to overpower the broth. So now I'm just gonna throw this in the broth. You wanna do it? Yeah. All right, you just gonna throw everything in the pot. Yeah, you just wanna squish it. Some people tie it with a rope, we don't. Okay. Boom Bo way. It's sweet, spicy, savory, all at the same time. I'm so excited yeah. to try this soup when we're done. I never went to culinary school. I came from my mom's kitchen. Right. Uh, as a kid, my mom used to cook all the time. My, my parents loved to host, and I was her little sous chef. As I grew older, and you're far from, farther from home, you start missing yeah. those flavors. You, you start, appreciate it. Yeah, and then you just start cooking on your own, right? So When did you make the jump to, maybe I want to open a restaurant? That very moment was when I realized that Vietnamese food in New York was lacking. Was, was lacking. <laughs> and there was just this void. And I, I felt, as a Vietnamese American, felt like, man, someone has to do this. And now it's the fun part. This is my favorite part of making the broth. This is a whole second round of components, right? Yes. Right here we have chopped lemongrass. You can also buy 
frozen lemongrass that are already chopped up already. So it's, like how you can find garlic yeah. and that kind of stuff. So we have paprika, then we have ground shrimp paste. So if you want to smell it. Yeah, I do. It's, you know, it's not for the lighthearted. I like that though. Yeah. Like fishy, it's like very in. fishy, pungy, very in your face. Chili saute oil, rock sugar, salt, and fish sauce. At our restaurant, we use the wok, but at home, you can use a regular uh, pan. We're gonna add this to the broth. So you're gonna add garlic, minced garlic. Don't be shy with it. Don't be shy with it. And then you're gonna add lemongrass. You don't wanna burn it, so you're gonna have to constantly stir. Add my paprika, while well, it's nice and red, right? Bumbo way would not be bumbo way without this. It's paprika, chili, ginger, and garlic, which is already everything that So you we have had. a lot of those flavors. But it, we have all those flavors already, but this just amplifies it. Now we're gonna add that to the broth. And that's what makes it so red. When it's almost done, add the ground shrimp paste, and then we're gonna add fish sauce as well. So fish sauce is very salty, but it will give you that umami flavor. At the very end, you guys can start adding rock sugar. Everybody's palate is different, right? But the, the broth should be spicy, sweet, savory, all at the same time. So if you guys feel that it's not sweet enough, keep add, checking for balance. Keep checking. Tell me a little bit of the story behind the restaurant. Madame Bo is actually my wife. Oh. So uh, I dedicated this restaurant to her, and not only just her, paying homage to all the women that cooked for us as kids. Okay. Food is a symbol of love. This is a rice vermicelli noodle, but for bumbo way, it's a little bit on the thicker side. So they're they're equivalent to almost like spaghetti size eight. So you're gonna bring it up to boil, and you're gonna cook your noodles down. So after we cook them, and you can feel, see, it's like really soft. They're obviously yeah. cooked. We're gonna chill them, right? And when you chill them. Yeah, what's the idea behind chilling your noodles after? When we're chilling our noodles, it's gonna give that more bouncy effect. We've been here in this kitchen for six hours. We removed all the bones, we removed everything out of the soup. This is the consistency that you're looking for. So this is when this becomes a little bit of a masterpiece, right? Like yeah. a little piece of art. We're about to plate our bumbo way dish right now. A lot of people in Vietnam, eat bumbo way with pork, right? I don't cook my broth with pork meat at all, but I do add pork roll. So tell me what's a Vietnamese pork roll, because so, I have never seen this. Uh, first of all, taste one. Okay. Gladly. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is like sort of a ham? Yeah, kind of? so it's like a Vietnamese okay. ham. It's steamed, mm -hmm. right? And um, Delicious. It's, it's just so good. I mean, we use it for our sandwiches, but me. Is there a right or wrong or the order of layering this? No, this is, this is, this at the end. You get to all, have fun with you it. You get to have fun with it. It's all about presentation. I like to add bean sprouts. A lot of people eat bombo wet traditionally with cabbage. We use purple cabbage mixed with regular cabbage on the side. It gives, it gives you that crunch, right, yeah. that you want. Cabbage has a great texture. We have onion, purple onions, but I think purple onions are the best compared to white onions. And then you're just gonna do cilantro, scallion. You like a little heat. Some more jalapenos, or you can use Thai chili peppers. Mm -hmm. And here I have basil, right? So Vietnamese culture, Vietnamese soups are always eaten with herbs. Very flavorful, very light, you know. There's lime here. Most people add lime to it. I always like to taste my broth first before I add anything, any more hot sauce or anything like that. It's just a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna follow your lead on this. Oh, that's so good. But I would definitely add lime to it. You would add lime to it, yes. Yeah, because there's heat, there's umami. I can even feel the sweetness. Yeah. Acidity would cut Acidity that. Acidity would cut through that and just bring it out. Do you know what I'm talking about when when I say that the broth is a lot more complex? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And like, 
I love pho. Yeah. But this has won me over completely. Yes. Like, I'm much more into these flavors that are strong. Yeah. It's good. Delicious. Awesome. The pork roll, everything together, it's just... Everything complements each other. Exactly. Cool. Flash my face in the... Flash my face with it.